Hello, this is Sunil Sundaraj with Jersey Sporting News. Uh, today, I'm happy to be speaking with Tom Bonacum, the new assistant men's basketball coach at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Previously worked at three years at St. Thomas Aquinas as the assistant coach, offensive coordinator for the, on the men's basketball team, head esports coach, then player development intern with the Dallas Mavericks, and most importantly, a graduate of Rampo College and a member of the Roadrunners men's basketball team that went to the NCAA Division Three Tournament Final Four in 2018. Coach Bonacom, it's a true honor and privilege being able to speak with you. Congratulations again on um, the, the being the new assistant men's basketball coach at, at FDU. Thank you. We're, you know, we're excited to be here. I'm, I'm excited to talk with you today, just like the old days. Yes, it definitely. Uh, hey, just talk about what uh, made, you know, FDU, you know, it said the perfect fit here, uh, it, you know, just to, you know, again, uh, you know, come over and said from uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it's just a great fit for all of us, um, especially my boss, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas is 20 minutes from here. Um, he was able to stay in the same house. His wife stay in the same job, kids in the same school, which is hard to find in a coaching change. Um, and then, he took myself and, and Cam Morrell with him um, from yeah. St. Thomas Aquinas, which says a lot about him. And we're excited to be here in a great area. Um, obviously, Jersey is rich with basketball history and tons of players. And this area is great for players. So we're excited to be here and looking forward to get going. Yeah, no, definitely. Let's talk about uh, this coaching staff. Of course, starting with head coach Tobin Anderson. You have assistant coaches uh, Jack Castleberry, uh, Cam Morrell. Uh, graduate assistant Mike Holloway Jr., video coordinator Joe Popovich uh, Jr., and Ray Savage, who's director of basketball operations. Just an outstanding staff. Just talk about, you know, so far, uh, Coach Bonacom, how everything has panned out so far in terms of preparing for the 2022-23 season. Yeah, I mean, we have a great staff. Most importantly, we're all so close. Um, we're big on family, you know. So Coach Castleberry is coming from the Citadel. Uh, he's been at Division One basically his whole career. Uh, we're coming from Division Two. Ray Savage has been at Division One. He's been at JUCO. Obviously, Mike Holloway's played here. He's an all-time yep. FDU legend. Yeah. He's the mayor on campus. Everybody <laughs> knows him. Um, Joe Popovich has just been unbelievable as our video coordinator. Great guy. Just a, a good staff of good people. You know, we come into the office every day. We have a smile on our faces. We're ready to work. And, you know, that that helps us. And, and staff yeah. chemistry is big for Tobin. Uh, it always has been. And, and we have an unbelievable staff. And we're we're looking forward to get going this year and and see what we can do. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We don't want to forget, of course, about the support staff, athletic trainer, Nick Hodgman, David Downey, director of, uh, uh, also David Downey, uh, the director of athletics, uh, Bradford uh, Herbold and pres uh, president Christopher A. Capuano. I mean, it's, it's re really important to have that structure in place in terms of athletics and, and the administration. Coach Bonacom, can you just talk about that? Absolutely. And they've, they've welcomed us here. They're all great people. I mean, we got the job in, in May, late May. <clears throat> really started getting going in, in June and they've helped us in every step of the way. I mean, it, there's been learning processes, you know, there's been different styles there's, but the, just the relationships that people have with you and, and they welcome us with open arms and, and helped us along the way. And it's been a blessing, you know, not everybody's able to have that situation when they get a new job and it's all great people. And, and they're all have working for a common goal to, to get this program going again. And we're excited. Yeah, no, Definitely. Hey, let's uh, talk about uh, this year's team. Again, two transfers from St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, Demetri Roberts and Grant Singleton, uh, a team that, you know, of course, uh, struggled last year. But from your perspective, Coach Bonacom, what do you see out of the team, out of the players that have been assembled on this roster and the potential, you know, said to, to have a winning record and, you know, go deep in the Northeast Conference uh, this uh, upcoming season? Yeah, you know, we have, we have a great group of guys. Um, obviously, there's a ton of new guys, and even the guys who are coming back from FDU, it's it's all new to them, too. It's new coaches. It's a new style. So they've gotten very close. We actually just finished up our summer access um, with our guys. We started July 5th. Uh, it's been an unbelievable six weeks. They've bought in. They've worked hard. They've gotten closer with each other. Um, they're starting to listen to our message, which is good. Um, you know, and we're excited about our group, you know, we're, yeah. we're not going to be picked very high, which is fine. Um, we got a lot of guys in our locker room with a chip on their shoulder and a lot of guys who work hard. So if we can continue to grow day by day and get better each day and, and look towards a common goal at the end of the season of let's get better every day to see what we can yeah. do, I think we'll be all right, you know, and yeah. we'll have our, our, our learning curves and it's all new. You know, we have, we actually have a third guy from stack who came with us, okay. Sean Moore. Um, okay. So we have three guys who really know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but uh, the guys are the guys are learning. 
you know, they're showing progress, which is great. And honestly, it's been two days since we've been off and we, we can't wait to get going again in the fall already. So, yeah. you know, it's an exciting group and I think it could, could be a special group if they continue to work hard. Yeah, that's wonderful. Hey, outstanding facilities, of course, at, at Fairleigh Dickens University with the Rothman Center. Talk about that. And then, of course, with strength and conditioning, you know, plays a pivotal role as well, Coach Bonacom. Yep, absolutely. I mean, from where we're coming from at Stack, I mean, this is an unbelievable facility. We're, we're fired up about it. Um, you know, my office overlooks a gym, which is great. But our yeah. Dave Downey, our strength coach, has been unbelievable. Um, our yeah. fitness, our, our weight room is right next to the court, um, so which is which is awesome. Um, the guys are bought in in the weight room. They're getting stronger. I mean, their progressions in just six weeks in there has been great as well. So yeah. our style, how we play, we play fast. So strength and conditioning is huge, and it's been great. And the facilities are facilities are awesome. Yeah, and uh, again, a, a, a great facility, great fan base as well that supports the team. You know, student body fans. You know, said from Bergen County, the rest of New Jersey. I'm sure that's going to be really important to this team. You know, said uh, moving forward, uh, Coach Bonacom. Absolutely. You know, like like anywhere, the the more you win, the more the more fans will come. But in this area, you know, basketball is so important, especially in Jersey, but up here, right across New York City, like. We think we can have a great fan base, and we've we've seen a ton of support already um, from alumni, from people in the community, and we're going to look to continue to grow that. And you know, as as the season gets going, hopefully have some crowds, in, you know, at the in, at the games, and yeah. as we get going and, and get better, and hopefully they grow. And we're excited to get it going, and hopefully we have some some buzz around campus early on. And yeah, obviously, if we do our jobs the right way and we start building this thing and then start winning games again, we'll uh, we'll have some good crowds here at the Rothman Center. Yeah, no, definitely. So I, I have to ask you, uh, Coach Ronica, what does a daily schedule entail for you from <laughs> morning till uh, night? <laughs> it's been a uh, it's been a busy few months. Um, yeah. Obviously, getting the job in May, we had to recruit for this team for twenty two, twenty three, and then you get right into the recruiting periods for the twenty three class and the twenty four yeah. class. So it's been a whirlwind. I mean, it's great that we get summer access division two. We never got summer access. So our guys were on campus and our focus this year was truly on our, our team this year, getting it going, focusing on those six weeks um, and then trying to, to recruit for the future, you know? So it's yeah. been, you show up early, you work late, um, you know, but truly love what I do and our staff loves what we do and we come to work and we get to work, you know, that's yeah. just how we've always done things. And it's a, uh, it's been good so far. It's been busy, yeah. but it's been good. That's fantastic. Again, you had a very successful run at St. Thomas Aquinas from 2019 to 2022. Again, as the assistant coach, offensive coordinator, and then head esports coach. Uh, you were multitasking. <laughs> nope. I mean, it's just uh, phenomenal what you're able to do in terms of the basketball, offensive game planning, skill development, film analysis, team operations, team went 67 and 12. Three ECC tournament championships, three NCAA tournament appearances, two trips to the uh, NCAA tournament Sweet 16. Yeah, I mean it doesn't get any better than that. And then of course uh, with the players that you developed, as said again in Grant Singleton, Dimitri Roberts. Talk about I mean just on the on, on the basketball side, and then we'll get to the esports uh, coaching you know, position. But just yep. in terms of the basketball side, uh, Coach Bonacom. So I mean, truly, I came to Stack, and they had the program rolling already. Um, I was able to come in. I was able to help player development. Obviously, the year with the Mavericks helped me there, um, mm -hmm. understanding the player development and the basketball side. But Coach Anderson, Coach Capella, who is now the head coach there, they really had it going. Um, so I was lucky enough to come into a winning program and learn from them, you know. But they were also very mm -hmm. open ideas, which is great. Um, so it's been unbelievable. It was an unbelievable three years at Stack, um, you know. And and we had we played in a fun style, an exciting style. Guys love to play. Guys love to work hard. Um, but it's all about our players. Like we were truly yeah. blessed to have great kids, hard workers. We were able to recruit the right kids to that school. And, you know, we, we can only do so much. They have to go out there and play. And yeah. it's a true, it's a true testament to them as players. And then to, to coach Anderson and coach Capel, what they built up from, I mean, they started there nine, nine years ago. They had five wins when they took over, you know, and they built it up to a, to a national powerhouse. So mm -hmm. I'm lucky to be able to be involved in that, you know, come in, help out when I could bring new ideas when I could, but, Honestly, it was it was built there, and I was very honored to be a part of that. 
Yeah, no, that's that's terrific. Okay, I have to ask you, uh, Coach Monaco, about uh, the esports, you know, head coaching position. That that's uh, you know to uh, you know pivot to that. I, it's it's really interesting, very unique. I, and I just wanted to ask you about that and a very historic run there as well. You know, first you know in team history, ECAC and then ECC. You know, said championships. I mean, you talk about building from the ground up. You were able to do that as well. Uh, just talk no. about it. I mean, just you know how how meaningful, how special that you know was to you personally. You no, know, it was it was a very unique situation. Um, they needed a head coach my first year there in the, in the fall. Um, they asked me to do it. I'm I'm very thankful. Our athletic director Nicole Ryan um, was able to let me do it. Um, and I, I, I went full, full steam ahead on it. You know, I started to recruit. We got hit with COVID my first year. Obviously, everything got shut down. Yeah. All about recruiting. You know, I, I can say I learned more from that job because of the recruiting, talking to student athletes, talking to student athletes or future student athletes, parents, bringing them on campus. Like, I learned so much from recruiting those kids as much as I've learned from recruiting basketball players. You know, it's a completely different aspect. I'm actually truly thankful I've had that opportunity you know, it, it's it's a different situation, but it was also a head coaching experience where yeah. I'm talking to players, I'm recruiting players, I'm talking to the league, I'm talking to commissioners, I'm talking about scheduling, which really helped me. Yeah. You know, and then I was lucky enough to 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 have great kids in our program, and we had success. You know, I ended my last week in that stack. We were at in Atlanta for the the national championship for one of our games. So, I mean, me and four athletes went down there, and it was an unbelievable experience. And um, just learning from that side of it is 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 great for me and was great for my career in terms of recruiting and and growing and obviously a, a special situation but I learned a ton from it and I yeah. I, I truly did enjoy it that's true that's tremendous and as you know you started out as a player development intern for the Dallas Mavericks uh again uh a number of uh responsibilities and tasks you know in terms of working <clears throat> with the coaching staff emphasis on player development video and analytics you know, that's the thing I, I really want to jump into Coach Bonacom is the technology, you know, with that, you know, video and analytics. That's really played such an essential role, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, basketball. I mean, all levels now, but especially, you know, at, at the NBA level. Just talk about, I mean, be able to, your first job, you know, working there as an intern with the, the marriage. So, I mean, that just had to be truly, you know, just a, a bucket list item, but just, you know, again, something that, you know, you always look back, you know, finally and just remember, just talk about your time with the Mavericks. Absolutely. And 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 I was truly blessed the year that I did it. Um, I was able to get it. It was Dirk's last year. It was Luca's first year. There were trades. Porzingis came halfway through the year. Like the players that were down there were unbelievable. But most importantly, it was the people I worked with and worked for. I um, mean, that staff had Rick Carlisle at the time, who's now with yeah. the Pacers. Jamal Mosley was a defense coordinator. who's now the head coach of the Magic. Steven Silas was the offensive coordinator. He's now the head coach of the Rockets. Larry Shiat was on staff. I mean, the number of coaches, Coach Mike was down there still. I mean, God, Sham guy was a player development. My boss, mm -hmm. my direct boss, Mike Procopio, unbelievable player development guy. Um, so just every day was the learning experience. Um, and then obviously learning to, how, to, how to train guys, how to get guys better, the, the mentality mm -hmm. aspect of it, how to be professional um, was all things that we learned. And then, like you said, we worked with the video group we worked with the analytical group and obviously at that level they have the highest technology yeah. um they have just about every camera angle you could possibly think of um every every technology that you need but you know they they really bought into it and so did the rest of the league and then that's how basketball is trending but yeah my experience down there was just an, an eye-opening experience but it truly showed me how to how to see the game differently as a coach mm -hmm. and it, it really jump-started my career um and I, I mean, I would come home every day and write down what I learned. And I had two notebooks full of notes. And, you know, sometimes I still look at those notes when I when I'm trying yeah. to think of something or we're having an experience yeah. here that I saw down there. And it, it it was truly a great experience. And one of those things that, you know, looking back, which probably jump jump started my career in into where I'm at now. Yeah, no, again, <clears throat> uh, it's tremendous. I mean, just, you know, those life lessons. And, and, you know, I thought one of the coolest moments is that, you know, you're serving on the scout team for practices and game day walkthroughs. Talk about those uh, <laughs> those times, Coach Monica. <laughs> well, let's just say there's a different level of conditioning. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're the greatest athletes yeah. in the world. Yeah. I was certainly not the greatest athlete in the world. Um, I was also not the 
best defender in the world, which got exposed to Division Three, so you can only imagine yeah. what happened in NBA practices. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was great. You know, we uh, one of the first days we got down there, we we had to learn the offense. So it's yeah we're out there with Coach Carlisle, you know, going through the offense, and we're going up and down a bunch, and it it was worse than a, a Chuck McBreen practice. <laughs> Man, I didn't know what I signed up for, but um, no, nah, it was great. Great experience. Yeah. And obviously the, the greatest players in the world, greatest athletes in the world. And, you know, it, it gives you a true understanding of why they're there and how good they really are, you know, yeah. but it was great, great experience. Uh, that's, that's again, that's, uh, that's terrific. I, I, a great segue to your alma mater, Rampo college. It yep. said, enjoyed, you know, it said, I mean, four or five years just of, again, amazing, you know, I said, basketball, memories, championships, playing for, uh, I said, a Hall of Fame coach in Chuck McGreen, actually Coach McGreen, I think now entering his 25th season, uh, again, as uh, the head coach of the men's basketball team. Uh, just talk about, I mean, that, you know, I brought it up in the intro, 2018, you know, reaching the final four back to back and Jack championships, New Jersey Athletic uh, Conference championships, hitting, you know, said uh, the half court, you know, game winning three point shot at the buzzer against New Jersey City University. I mean, I can go on, but it just talk about especially that that final four team, you know, I said your senior year and being able to, I mean, that was a special group, uh, Coach Bonacom. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and, I had an unbelievable experience at Rampo. I loved every minute of it, but what, what made it special were the people, you know, it was my teammates. We talk all the time, you know, Jimbo just got married. I was in his wedding down in, in Costa Rica, yeah. him and his <laughs> wife, Jen and everything. And um, just the people from, from my teammates, obviously to the coaching staff, coach McBreen, coach Gabriel, yeah. coach Shepard, coach Kadena, you know, everybody coach Trevor, just unbelievable yeah. coaches. And then the support staff that we had at, at Rampo was great. You know, it was really a community. And that's what made it special. Like you look back and obviously the memories of basketball are great, yeah. You know, but it's, it's the, the time you spent in, in the hotels on the road and it's the time you spent on campus and it's the time you spent at events on campus. And, you know, I just went back to the, the Rempo alumni golf outing you know, <laughs> about a month or two ago. And I saw all those people and it's like, I haven't seen some in, in three, four years, but it's like, you just saw yeah. them yesterday. You know, that's, that's, that's what right. made it so special um, from the athletic director all the way down to, you know, the sports staff and everything. That's what, that's what made Rampo truly great. And obviously the winning helped, you know, and we were yeah. a tough group that had a chip on our shoulder and, and we worked hard and we, we grew, we came in as freshmen and we took our lumps and we got better each year and added pieces each year. And, you know, coach McBreen was great getting us ready to go. And, and um, it was a special group to be a part of. And obviously I wouldn't, wouldn't change for the world. I had a great experience there. Yeah. I mean, that was truly historic. I mean, after what, 27, 28 years, you know, to, to get back to the final four, yeah. I mean, for you guys, I mean, of course, I, you know, I'll rattle the names off. Chris Mosley, Nick Stanek, Jim Belong, Josh Ford, Connor Romano, Rob Lewis, Pat Peterson, Jordan Zagadou, and Matt Lacka. I mean, that you talk about a solid foundation of players. And then you talk about this coaching staff as well. I mean, this is, I mean, everything, it's just having that chemistry and that cohesiveness for those number of years, those four years. I mean, that's really because you guys knew each other, as you said, those road trips as well. But, you know, playing at the Bradley Center, you know, one of the best facilities, you know, one of the best gyms in, you know, in NCAA Division Three. Just talk about that as well, because the Bradley Center really, I mean, that you talk about home court advantage. That was that was it for you guys. Talk about that, Coach Bonacom. Absolutely. I mean, our our fan support at Rampo for Division Three school was special. Um, you know, especially as, as we got going. But, like, you rattled off the names of guys that were on that team. You rattled off nine, ten guys who could have been stars on that team. And, and the list yeah. continues. Rob McWilliams, Connor Romano, all Probably, those guys right. that were part yeah. of that team that ended up being stars at Rampo in their time and having having great careers as well. But the thing that made that group special is every day in practice, you know. And mm -hmm. now as I'm a coach, I see it. I didn't always see it as a player all the time when yeah. we were going up and down and practice yeah. was hard every day. But as a coach, I see like those, those is what make you special those days in practice. And there were times where we had an unbelievable senior group that started Jimbo, Josh, me, Chris Stanek, yeah. you know, started every game that year, but there were days in, in practice. We lost every drill, you know, that's how special that second group was. And they, and they pushed us and guys like Rob, Rob Lewis, Jordan, Pat Peterson, like, they used to make life miserable in practice you know? and, and that's what that's what made us special but the best thing about that group was after a tough practice after a tough game 
we're all walking across campus together. We were family, you know, we're, we're, we're still mm-hmm. brothers. We still talk all the time. That's yeah. what made that group special. You know, just talk about playing for coach McGreen, you know, just, just some of the intangibles that stood out to you, you know, during those four or five years playing for him. And even now after uh, graduating, uh, just what he brought to the table in terms of his uh, leadership, uh, yeah. coach Bondicum. I mean, he's the most competitive person I think I've ever met. Um, you definitely don't want to play golf against him now because he's still <laughs> as competitive as, and it's, he still has the fire. Um, but he just, he helped me see the game differently um, as a player. You know, I, I came in as a freshman. I, I, I mean, don't let him forget. He put me on a JV team as a freshman at Rampo. Don't, don't ever forget that. Um, but he helped me see the game throughout my four years. You know, he's a mentor. He knew I always wanted to coach. So he, he helped me on that side of it, but he's so competitive. He's had so much success. Um, you know, he's a student of the game all the time. He's 25 years at Ramapo. Yeah. He had division one experience prior to that, but I mean, he's, he's always learning, um, you know, and it, it just shows you the type of guy he is. I mean, he sends me texts with, with quotes and different information still to this day. And I, I read them all the time and I, I get back to him and I share them with our guys. And, yeah. and that's just the type of person is as, as competitive as he was and as good of a coach he is, he's just a better person. Yeah. You no. Know? And, and that's what made him, him special. And, you know, it, it's a different style of coaching, and he was he was hard on guys, but at the end of the day, he pushed us for the right reasons, and and he got his message across, and and you can't blame the guy. I mean, he's been to tons of NCAA tournaments, and he went to yeah. the Final Four. He's been to the Elite Eight. I mean, he was he was close to another Final Four earlier in his career, and he's had unbelievable players. And um, you know, as as competitive he is, he's just a, a good person and a good mentor. And I, I mean, I call him all the time when I'm on the road recruiting. He's one of the the first guys I call. So. Um, it's been it's been great. He's been great to me um, as a player. And after after school, him and his wife and everything, the Rampo family extends and we still stay in touch. And, that, and that's what's special about Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just a, just a remarkable run, especially at that Division three level, which is not easy to do year after year. And as you said, I mean, just not only with um, the NCAA tournament uh, runs, you know, with you talk about, again, uh, Sweet 16. Final Four, I mean, Elite Eight, and then you talk about the New Jersey Athletic uh, Conference Championships. Those back-to-back years winning at classic battles against New Jersey City University. I, I, I had to ask, even after, you know, to this day, you know, that that half-court shot at the buzzer, uh, you know, that you hit at the Bradley Center. I mean, Sports Center top 10 play. I mean, just one of the greatest shots, I think, you know, ever. And, you know, I said... Uh, when you think about that moment, I, 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 you know, I, I asked you before, but even now, what, what, what comes to your mind, Coach Bonacom, about that shot? You know, it's, it's funny. There's the, obviously a lot of emotions in it, obviously with the dog pile yeah. and what happened after. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when I think about that memory, I look at one picture, and there's a picture that, that somebody was sitting courtside, one of the reporters, and, and took a picture, and it, it was mm-hmm. right after it went in, and it caught every single player on the bench's emotion as it went in. And I think about that shot, I think about those guys and, and what it meant yeah. to them, the excitement on their faces, you know, and, and that's that's what really stands out to me. It's like the emotions that those guys got to experience, the guys around me got to experience, my coaches, they're all celebrating the picture. Like, I mean, if I could make it my phone background, I probably would because that just yeah. shows what those guys were experiencing at that time. You know, that, that shot's not about, I'm just the one who was in a position to make the shot. You know, it, yeah. it could have been anybody on the team and just seeing those guys' faces and, and their happiness and then going to see them play in the NCAA tournament and experience that as well. It, it's it's special, you know, so that's yeah. that's what stands out about the shots. And obviously the NJAC, the classic battles, it's still one of the most competitive leagues in Division Three. Yes. Um, which is great. And I'm, I'm actually, now that I'm in a coaching side of it, I'm, I'm close with a lot of those coaches now. We, we still talk when we see each other on the road recruiting, um, which is which is great. But um, it's like a little and Jack brotherhood. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. It's been it's been battles from from the very beginning, yeah. and um, it still is as competitive. I I still look back. My uh, my boss, Coach Anderson's a Division three guy. I'm a Division yeah. three guy, so we always talk. We're on the road sometimes. Yeah. On the bus, we're looking at <laughs> three hoops at the scores, talking about Division three basketball. Our other yeah. assistants who came for Division one think we're crazy, but. Um, we still look back and watch all this, the, the scores and everything. So, yeah, you know, it's great league and obviously the great experience making the shot and everything. But it's it's all all for the guys, you know. Yeah, you had so many accolades and accomplishments, and, and you know what? You didn't have an easy start at Rampo. Cut your know, first season, cut you know uh, down to uh, due to injury. You bounced back to be in check uh, men's basketball rookie of the year. 
And then it just was a rapid ascension in terms of your scoring, your rebounding, your assist. I mean, and you know what was so impressive, Coach Bonacom, was your durability. The minutes you played, you know, said on that team. Just talk, I mean, that, I mean, year after year working, you know, said extremely hard, you know, said off the court, again, to build up your skill set. And uh, obviously the results, you know, paid off on the court. Just talk about, I mean, that that it took a lot of commitment, a lot of dedication. Uh, just talk about that uh, process. Yeah, I think the biggest thing was was the maturity um, physically. You know, I, I when I was in high school, everybody tells you, oh, you got to lift, you got to lift. You don't really, it doesn't really hit you at that level. Um, you know, so when I got hurt that first year, um, I really spent time in a weight room. We had a few upperclassmen who I was close with who really got me involved in the weight room. And that's what really jump-started my career, um, getting bigger, getting stronger. Um, but then obviously every summer going home and, and working on my game. My dad was a coach. He coached me when I was younger. Um, he would push me. You know, there, there was a day if I'm if I was sitting on the couch and I hadn't worked out, there was a comment coming somewhere, you know. So it's kind of like get out there, work on your game, get better. And it's it's kind of like a, a, you, everybody talks about the chip on your shoulder, but it's like what what's your goal, you know. And every year we we freshman year, we had a, a decent year, you know. Well, now it's time to get better, you know. It, it's time to win more games. And quite honestly, I mean, everybody will say it, but I mean, I never really thought about myself getting better it's like what can I do to, to, to help the team and as yeah. as those wins happen and and numbers start came come around like the the personal accolades came but at the end of the day I mean you watched me play for years I couldn't get create my own shot if it depended on it, it was all about the guys getting me the ball in the right spots and making shots but at the end of the day it was just progressing to try to win more games and uh, the individual accolades came along with it but yeah. it was just going home every summer with a goal of of getting better and trying to win a championship you know and luckily those last two years we were able to Another special moment, I, I was there to witness it personally at the Bradley Center was your junior year, scoring your 1,000 career point, uh, I believe, against Montclair State. Uh, talk about that moment. Uh, of course, your family was, you know, in attendance. That was really an emotional, I, I remember, night. Uh, just talk about how much, you know, that meant to you, uh, hmm. Coach Bonacom. Meant a ton, you know. Um, actually, it's a, it's a special story about that night. My, my dad was away on business. Okay. Um, for that okay. week and obviously you never know when you're going to score your thousand point yeah um, coach coach mcbreen actually never told me how close i was um now my parents might have been counting yeah. a little bit because <laughs> my dad flew home early from a business trip and, okay. and showed up at the game in case i whatever i was away 21 or something that day i was away yeah. um yeah. he had a feeling that i was going to get it um he came home and and that, honestly that's what i'll take away you know a guy who, who left the business trip to come home and watch his son play you know, a, a college basketball yeah. game to, to share that moment is special. Yeah. Um, but it was a great, great memory. I did it on a free throw, so they they were able to, yeah. to have a little <laughs> special moment for me. I kind of wish I, I got fouled if I had maybe had one up. <laughs> uh, layup, but, um, yeah. It's all good. It happened on a free throw, and luckily the free throw went in. You know. Um, but then we got right back to the game. It was great, but special moment, yeah. obviously. But it's more special for my family to be there and and, and witness yeah. it. I agree. I agree. Hey, I just have a couple more left. I, you know, yep. you flourished as a student athlete. You talked about it before at every stop at St. Thomas Aquinas. Now here at FDU, what you were able to do, you know, I said earning a bachelor of science degree in business and business administration, a member of the student athletic advisory committee, president of that committee, just to, because that, you know, again, it's not easy, you know, not everyone is cut out to you know do that, but again, you were able to do it, you know, seamlessly. Just talk about, you know, again, earning that degree, but also being a part of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee. Yeah, absolutely. So I started, I never would have thought as a freshman, I was a quiet kid. I never really thought I would be a kid in that position. Um, Kathleen Finnegan, who was an assistant athletic director there, approached me actually after my first year, and she was like, you should get involved in this. It's something good for you, you know. Um, so I got involved with it and I just kept progressing and I saw it as a great opportunity to to be a leader on campus um, and it provided other outlets. So a, a, in that role, I met with the vice president, the dean of students um, once a month. So those connections, which I still have connections with them and I still talk to them all the time and and build those relationships that all helped me grow. And it's just to be able to talk to people and be able to be a leader and all that you learn from roles like that. So I'm thankful for those roles. It was definitely great. For me to be as a student athlete, to be able to have an impact on campus as well and the community as well, um, which was great. And, and we did so many special things with the the SAC program on, in the community on our campus. So it was it was definitely a great experience. You know, I almost get this over leadership. 
you were the captain of the men's basketball team for four years. T- t- that is the pinnacle. That is you talk about the top of the mountain is to you know be in that role and have that see you know talk about that. That I I did not want to you know forget yep. that. I mean that that is significant. Just talk about that, Coach Bonacom. Special, you know, special. But it it it's you're only as good as the guys that are following you. You know, and anybody on that team could have been a leader by the end of our, our senior year. I just had the title, you know, but going forward, it's just like getting the guys to, to realize, like, we could be a special group. We all have to work yeah. hard. We have to buy into what we're doing. And yeah. luckily, they were they were able to to buy into my to my vision and my common goal and see that mm-hmm. same vision for themselves. And they worked hard every year. We got better every year. But every given day, another guy in that locker room was a leader on that day. You know, and I, I have to give a, a testament to them and, and let let you know that and let everybody know that that it, I, I had the title and so did Josh and so did Jimbo. Yeah. But at the same time, Nick Stanek was a leader. Chris Mosley was a leader. Young guys were a leader. They spoke up. Pat Peterson was an unbelievable leader as a yeah. sophomore. So it was a special group, you know, but um, Coach 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 McBreen uh, <laughs> trusted me early on, you know, and, and gave me that role and, and allowed me to speak up. and. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed the process and enjoyed that role. Yeah, no, definitely. And I want to, of course, talk about the administration. I think Director Harold Crocker, you know, did it just, a, again, superb job there as well at, the, at Rampo College. <clears throat> Have to take it back to uh, your from Fanwood, uh, attended Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, all yep. Union County. Had to talk talk about being from Fanwood, New Jersey, the, the community, but just, you know, playing basketball there again, earned a number of honors there, you know, on the team. Talk about those uh, times as well, uh, Coach Bonacom. The best, you know, Scott Plains, <laughs> Plains fan with high school. Um, <laughs> I'm lucky enough, great community, great athletic community. Yeah. Um, I still I still have a great relationship with a lot of guys from Scott Plains fan with high. Um, mm-hmm. You know, me, me and my buddies have a group chat. We talk every day. Um, it's just our, our bond that we've had there. Um, but I still have a relationship with the athletic director, the athletic trainer, just a great community that supported athletics. A lot of great athletes came out of there. I mean, I wasn't even close to the, the top five basketball players that came out of there. There was, I mean, great players, um, but great experience, great town. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful when I can go back and see my parents who still live there. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, see the community, it's a lot, a lot has changed since the last time I've been there. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's great. And being an athlete at Scotch Plains High was, was special and, um the community is great that's good that's good hey you talked about your your parents i just want to say the support you've received you know through your academic your athletic journey now you know here you know said four years into your uh into your uh career here talk about what they've meant to you you know just again you know for all these years coach bonico unbelievable i mean my my parents and my my brothers have been unbelievable support system from the beginning but especially these last four years you know Getting into coaching, it's 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 a grind, especially financially, you know. And if if I ever needed help in any way, they were the first people to to help me and assist me. And I would not be in a position I am today without them. Literally financially, you know, they've helped out a lot. Um, you know, I'm I'm living in Texas on my own a year out of a year out of college, not making a ton of money, working for the Mavs and, and getting a college job, make, not making a ton of money, paying rent, you know, paying for grocery, making ends meet. They were always there to support me. And they're always watching the games, whether it's in person or on a live stream, um, which is special. And and it's it's a true testament to to how they raised myself and my four brothers, or my three brothers, four of us, um, and and always push us to to follow our our dreams and push ourselves to be the best we can be. But they always had our back, so it's it's true. I would not be here without without them, and they are a major impact on why I'm still in coaching and and pursuing this dream and. You know, when I when I told my my parents that that Tobin got this job and and he's taking me with them, they I mean you couldn't have seen two happier people that you know their their support and and their hard work providing for me to chase my dreams has has paid off. You know, so yeah, no, uh, it's truly it's truly all about them. That's fabulous. Hey, before you get the final word and message, Coach Bonacom, I think you're in a, a just absolutely perfect spot to offer uh, advice and a message to younger kids and athletes as well as uh, people who want to break into the coaching ranks. So uh, I'm going to uh, just wondering what, what you would say to people who are going to watch this interview. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, if you want to do something, give it a shot. 
grind. I mean, everything's going to be grind. If, if you want something, you got to give it your best shot. But it comes from a, from being a player. You know, you, you work hard every day and there's nothing guaranteed. You could go out as a player and never win a championship and and not win games. And there's a lot of guys who aren't lucky enough to win a championship, but they still work hard every day. So it's about working hard every day and following your dreams and and pursue it. You know, people think I would would have been crazy for what I made financially in this in this journey. But I'm truly blessed to be where I at. And that is just because I showed up every day and, and went to work regardless of what the situation was and have your head where your feet are and and chase your dreams and never look forward, never look back and and see what you can do. Yeah, well said. OK, uh, Coach Bonacom, you get the final word and message uh, for family, friends, uh, former classmates, teammates, uh, coaches, Rampo College in New Jersey, St. Thomas Aquinas, Dallas okay. Mavericks, Scotch Plains, Fanwood High School. I give you the floor. I would not be here without every single person you mentioned there. You know, it shaped me to be who I am today. I'm I'm excited to be where I'm at and what the future holds here at FDU for us as a as a staff and as a program. And um, you know, I hope I hope I stay in touch with all those people who helped me get there. And um, you know, first of all, I want to thank you for for getting me on here and continuing to follow my career and Jersey sports and you're an unbelievable guy. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you so much, uh, Coach Bonacom. Wishing you all the best. Uh, I said as the assistant uh, coach on the FDU men's basketball team, especially uh, uh, the rest of the coaching staff, the team uh, in the 2022-23 season. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.